Now, I'd like to think that the last episode with a match against Newcastle was just a blip on the radar. We have turned things around, partially because we brought in a brand new goalkeeper. You can see him there. We'll take a look in just a second. But also, we beat Manchester United 3-0. We do still have a problem, though, where we aren't particularly scoring goals. We're keeping clean sheets. We've kept four clean sheets out of six games now, losing against Wolves and obviously losing against Newcastle. Manchester United, we win 3-0. Ward Prowse with a free kick. Maitland Niles also on the score sheet. And Adam Adam Armstrong, and he said Adam Lalana. Adam Armstrong also getting a goal late on in that one. Jonas Ullman making his debut and playing very, very well. Beating Fulham 1-0. Timu Puki from the penalty spot, losing against Wolves. And then 2-0-0 draws. We can't score goals, which is very accurate to how Saints play in real life. So this is our new number one goalkeeper, Jonas Omlin, signed from Montpellier. He has cost £10 million. I asked the board to sign us a goalkeeper because we only had about £400,000 in our transfer budget. And they went, OK, we'll do it. So Jonas Omlin is in. He is our number one goalkeeper. He is better than Gavin Mazzunu by a fair distance. I didn't want to do this, but I feel like we have to do this. Otherwise, we are going to get sacked. And because of those results, it does mean the league table looks a bit like this. We have a game in hand, which will be in today's episode against bottom of the table, Bournemouth, who have lost all five games so far. If we win that, we'll go on to 11 points, which could be good enough to put us into fifth place. I don't think we're going to be in fifth because Palace and Leicester also have a game in hand as well. So the starting lineup for the Bournemouth game then will be Omlin in goal, Walker Peters, Chaleta Saar, Salisu and Maitland Niles in defence. If we can have another centre, I mean, we've got to do it, haven't we? We've got all four defenders with double-barreled names. That's pretty impressive. Ward Prowse as well, another double-barreled name playing as the DLP with Diallo, Onyeka, Armstrong and Armstrong, and Timu Puki leading the line. Puki is there because Che Adams actually picked up an injury. We don't want to basically break him in too quickly. He's also been playing very badly lately. So we're at home for this one then, and I'm, I'm confident. I'm pretty confident in this. Bournemouth have lost all five of their opening games of the season. They also drew, by the looks of it, in the Carabao Cup. They are playing a similar formation to what we played against Newcastle, which didn't work. So I am somewhat confident in this. 35 seconds on the clock, and we've got the first highlight. Chris Meppham with the ball for Bournemouth. Finds Lloyd Kelly. Are we going to put some pressure on, or is this going to be Bournemouth doing a slow build? We're putting the pressure on. Armstrong's got the ball through ball to Puki, and Timo Puki makes it 1-0. Not even a minute on the clock. And I'm hoping this is how this game goes. We put like six or seven past them. Since the opening goal, not a lot has happened until now. It is Bournemouth with the ball in the penalty area. Frank Onyeka can steal it, though. Taking his time, Bella Kotchap down the line finds Maitland Niles, who, by the way, is a very good player for us. I don't want to be playing him as a left back, but we don't really have too many other options at the moment. Jefferson Lerma collects. Diallo stolen it. That's good. Go on, go for a run. Through ball. Timo Puki's in again, and this time it's straight into the hands of the Brazilian keeper Neto. I would like to get a second goal before half-time. If that's possible, I would like another one. Just going 2-0 at the break would be quite nice. Kelly with the ball for Bournemouth towards Kiefer Moore. Controls it well. Bella Kotchap, I think that is chasing back. Omlin with the save. It goes off for a corner. So Bournemouth actually aren't looking as bad as they perhaps might be perceived as from their league position. Solanke heads over the bar. They're not doing great. But then again, we're also not a very good team either. Chaleta Saar with a free kick. It's a terrible free kick. Not sure what he was trying there, but we've nicked it anyway. Stuart Armstrong with the ball. Tries to find some space. Back toward Prowse. Walker Peters crosses it towards Adam Armstrong, who doesn't go for anything. And that wasn't a highlight, was it? It's carried on. We've got it again through Walker Peters. On Yeka to Armstrong. Been kicked by Lerma. How is that not a free kick? And now Kiefer Moore's going to counter-attack for Bournemouth. Down the right-hand side. We've got Maitland Niles chasing back. Kiefer Moore stops and holds up play. Invites Chris Meppham forward, of all people. Cross comes in, Solanke's there, and Solanke scored. What was that highlight? I'm sure we were kicked. I'm sure we were kicked in the middle of that. Diallo's got an injury from it. Well, half-time, it is 1-1 at St Mary's Stadium, and Bournemouth have suddenly come back into this game. I don't like what I've seen. Some players... Now, fullbacks don't work. Fullbacks don't work on this. 6-2 and a 6-3. Everyone else is doing reasonably okay. Diallo, we need to bring him off at half-time, so it's Lavia going to be coming on. Walker-Peters as well. Do we? I mean, what do we do there? Do we do that? Put Maitland-Niles as a right-back for a bit? First highlight of the second half, and it's Romain Perrault's throw to Armstrong. Bella Kotchap, just inside our half. Maitland-Niles, now the right-back, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Chaleta Saab with it. Maitland-Niles, we need to go down the line. Why aren't we going down the line? Lavia collects. 
Maitland Isles again. Chalatasar, we're just passing it around, not going anywhere. We're making no progress. Maitland Isles has gone for a little bit of a run as a very loud motorbike goes past my house. Lerma to Billing, big lump upfield towards Zamora. What are you doing, Omlin? That's what you're doing. Good, good idea. That's what we like to see from our goalkeepers. Christie's collected. Christie's lost it. Zamora's got it. This, what is going on? Ball control seems to be a bit of an issue, doesn't it? Nobody seems to be able to keep hold of the ball at all. Zamora's into the penalty area. Is no options. Goes for goal straight into the hands of Omlin. And I would argue that wasn't a highlight. Maybe this one will be. Billing to Christie. Goes for a spin. Plays it all the way back though to Neto. Who is well outside of his area. If we can steal this, go for a little chip. Neto's collected it again. We need to intercept and we do. But we've headed it straight to a Bournemouth shirt. Maitland Niles kicks it straight to Ryan Fredericks. Our pass accuracy must be awful. This, is something not quite right here? Solanke's made it 2-1 to Bournemouth. All of that came from a misplaced pass. Again, pass completed is 82%. Um, and I feel like we've not seen a single one of those 82%, have we? Maitland Niles and Bella Kotchap are playing badly. Salisu is coming on. We're going to do Lianko coming on as a right back. Sure. This shows how badly we've been playing defensively when you take off four, uh, three defenders. Uh, we're also going to do... Pio and Sisto can come on, I think. He's been out injured. That's why we've not seen Sisto yet so far. So he's going to come on. That's all of our subs as well. We need to do something. Anything, please. Ward Prowse with a free kick. Is this an equaliser? Armstrong is there. It rustles the back of the net. But unfortunately, it's gone wide. That's been our best chance of the second half. And it was not very good at all. Final couple of minutes of the game. Four minutes of injury time. We're going to lose to a team who have not won a game all season. How have we done that? Really? This, this is a mess. Their goals came from just poor passes, didn't they? All of their goals came from poor passes. I'm not happy with that. Thrash arms, that's embarrassing. That is shameful. So that leaves us after six games bang smack in the middle of the table on eight points. Bournemouth move up to 18th place in the table because, you know, because we, we decide to let in goals against Bournemouth. Next up then, we're playing against fifth place Wolves, a team who have already beaten us this season in the Carabao Cup. So I'm not particularly confident for this one either. Right then, for the Wolves game, we've done some tactical tweaks. I'm not going to go through them because I don't think they're going to work too much. But basically, what I've basically said, basically, I'll say it again. Walker Peters is now, get further up the pitch, mate. Because that's your good ability. You're really good going forward. Defensively, you're pretty decent. But you're not as good as I think you are when you go forward. Armstrong, stop going so far up the pitch, basically. Also, Jonas Omlin, stop being an attacking sweeper keeper. Because we don't want that. That's a bad idea. So it's going to be Omlin in goal. Walker Peters, Chiletta Saar, Salisu and Maitland Niles. Lavia, Onyeka, Ward Prowse. Armstrong and Armstrong. Shea Adams leading the line for this one. I would love to know how to score goals. This is the problem that we are having. The three goals that we scored against United. One was a direct free kick from Ward Prowse. One was a penalty. So we have scored a total of four goals, I think. Outside of, or maybe even less, three goals, potentially, that have been in open play. Everything else has been from a set piece. So far, 20 minutes into the game, and we're looking all right, aren't we? We're looking okay. Four shots so far to Wolves' is one. Only one on target. Bournemouth are losing to Liverpool, which is no surprise to anybody. This realistically is... This is a draw, isn't it, this game? This, on paper, you want to be looking for a draw. Maybe a win if we can nick it. We are at home. Ward Prowse with a free kick just before half-time. Curling effort. It's a good save, and Salisu is there. And Salisu gets very lucky, because I think Guedes actually tried to clear it. Couldn't manage it. And we have taken the lead against Wolves. Again, kind of from a set piece, sort of. Right, we are looking actually pretty good. We're actually looking pretty good. 13 uh, percent possession. 13 shots, four of them only on target. 88 passes complete, 51 possession as well. So we're looking good, I think. I do need to say to you, Armstrong, do something. No, nothing's working. I feel like team talks don't seem to do a huge amount at the moment. Um, because... Only three people seem to react from any of that. Ten or so minutes into the second half. Shea Adams is looking poor, by the way. He's on a 6.4 at the moment. Maitland Niles collects it on the ground to Adams. He's been clattered and it's going to go to VAR. And it is most likely going to be a penalty. And I think Maitland Niles might be the one to take it. It is a penalty then. And it is going to be Ainsley Maitland Niles stepping up for potentially his second goal of the season. And his second penalty of the season as well. It's into the bottom corner. We have doubled our lead against Wolves. And this may well be our first win on camera of FM23. Minutes later, barely minutes, arguably seconds later, another highlight. Armstrong has the ball for us. Walker Peters needs to be doing that overlap. I've told him to do an overlap and he's not bothering. Armstrong is still going forward with the 
Yep, that's your day done, mate. I mean, you're doing... You're on a 6-6. Six, six. You're not doing all right at all. Double change then. Armstrong and Adams off. Arebo and Pookie coming on. Why did he shoot that? Why did he actually shoot that? That's not what he... He should have passed that a million times. Maitland Niles' throw finds Salisu. The two goal scorers combining all the way back to Omlin. Forward finds Lavia with a yellow card. This is, I think, this is Lavia's first start for us, isn't it? Chaleta Sar lumps it down towards Walker Peters on the right hand side. That's what I want him to be doing. Tries to play it in. It's fallen for Timo Puki, and Puki gets his fourth of the season. It is 3 0 against Wolves. Have we suddenly sorted something out tactically here? Probably not, but it is definitely working against Wolves. That goal was entirely set up by Chaleta Sar's pass as well. I know Walker Peters got the assist. But Chaleta Sar, to just see him there, was a great, great ball. Lavia is going to come off. What do we do here? We don't have any midfielders. Lianco. Lianco can play there, probably. I mean, why are we doing that with Lianco? He's he's actually not a bad footballer, is he? We're going to put Lianco there just because a bit of Brazilian flair from a centre-back playing out of position. 74th minute. Walker Peters to Lianco. Walker Peters, ball forward, finds Armstrong. It's another penalty. It's going to be another penalty, isn't it? I did see somebody on Twitter say that are we seeing a lot more penalties so far and um, I think we probably are because this is our third penalty in six games and our second penalty in this match. So it is Ainsley Maitlenau stepping up, blasts it into the back of the net. He's now scored two goals, three all season, all of them from the penalty spot as well. It's 4-0. Just over 10 minutes to play. Wolves having the ball. Totti with it. The centre-back, the young centre-back, I think. Ruben Neves loses out to Joe Aribo, plays it on the ground to Armstrong. Armstrong has to make it five, kicks it straight into Jose Sar's face. Corner for James Ward-Prowls to take. Right-footed towards the front post where we want it to go. It's towards Salisu, and Mohamed Salisu has doubled his tally for the season and the match as well. 80 minutes played, 5-0 up against Wolves. I was expecting this result against Bournemouth. Not going to lie, this is what I thought would happen against Bournemouth, not Wolves. The full-time whistle goes, and we, we were good, weren't we? We were actually pretty good there. Salisu picking up the Man of the Match award. Maitland Niles with two penalties, so arguably some match engine bugs and things like that could have come into play for this one because I don't think two penalties in a match, and I think it might be four penalties all season. Does sound a bit steep, doesn't it? So with that victory against Wolves, we leapfrog over them into the European spots up into seventh place. Jonas Omlin has kept five clean sheets this season, and we've still lost twice. So if we concede, that's it, isn't it? So that is what the league table looks like then at the end of episode two. Seven games played, we have leapt up into seventh place over Wolverhampton Wanderers. We have lost just two matches. Omlin has kept five clean sheets. Basically, every game he has played, he has kept a clean sheet bar one, I think. And that was the Bournemouth game. So Omlin's a very good signing. So far, Omlin has been a very good signing. That's going to do it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to go a little bit further into the future. We're going to go to just before the World Cup. So we're going to have Aston Villa and Manchester City towards the end of, or the end of November, the start of November. And then we're obviously going to have the Qatar World Cup as well, which is just going to get in the way. And then we come back on Boxing Day, apparently, to play Leicester. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll be back next time with more Football Manager 2023 with Southampton. And hopefully more 5-0 wins. Thanks for watching.